Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 71. It's August 7th, 2011. And it is flipping hot here. It is hot. It is 102 with a humidity index of 60% right now. A humidity of 60%, I'm sorry. Um, so the, the heat, heat index, index is, is like 112 crazy. or something. It's, it's very hot. It's been hot all week though. Yeah, Michael promises me that the heat is going to break next week. I'm going to hold him personally responsible. <laughs> Michael, in charge of weather. <laughs> if it does not. Um, by the way, if you hear any noise, he's installing something outside the door, which... Are you going to tell people it's about very it? Fun. I'll tell y'all when it's done and I can show you. Until then, it's, <laughs> it loses its funniness if you can't see it. <laughs> it is hilarious. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. Yeah, and we're rambling. Sorry, hi, I'm <laughs> Leslie, also known as, you don't call me Les on all the sites. Um, on the interwebs. On the interwebs, yep. We're everywhere. <laughs> so, we already said the episode number. Yeah, okay. It's hot. I'm sorry, we're distracted. So, works in progress. Would you like to go first? I can go first. My first, my very first thing. I'm in the middle of the row. Let me scooch it down on my signature needles. Let me look at the size. So, this is 4.0 millimeter, size 6, and it is the Thin Ice Charlotte's out of Tempted and her Good Girl base. I'm not certain on the colorway name because it's when I had her specially dye me. So, I'll have to ask her what she's going to call it. Very equal almost. It is. I'm enjoying it immensely. I got, um, I think y'all saw it when I was still working on this texture stitch pattern right there. So I've gotten around an inch and a half, including an increased round. So it's up to around 300 stitches now across. So it's slowly but surely making progress. So now this is the pattern you're designing? Yep. Okay. Because I'm sure people are going to go to Ravelry and go, where's the nice? <laughs> where's the nice? So, so it's not up yet. It's not up yet, and it won't be up for a while, because after I get done knitting it and writing everything up, then I have to send it to testers who tell me all the things that I do wrong, <laughs> which a, is awesome. It's important, because it's, it's hard for you to important. look at something and see the error, because your head fixes what's not there. So somebody else Also, has to look like, at it. my math skills, atrocious. <laughs> I don't know how I graduated high school. And then I had to take two math classes in college. It's ridiculous how poor I am at math. It's the one thing that I will never teach. And besides that, oh, Stephen West has a knit-along going on. I hadn't heard. Really? <laughs> It's a secret surprise. Um, I think there are over a thousand projects already on Ravelry. Don't surprise me. Stephen and I West started has a it. He does. And so this is mine, and I'm knitting it on size five needles. Why? Because my sixes are done. <laughs> and this is oh, my first clue. <laughs> Just throw it into a box. It is in Tarsha, but and Leslie says it's any trick. <laughs> We also had like a side bet going on whether or not it was in Tarsha, going to be in Tarsha. But I am giving it a chance and I'm really actually, I learned how to pick up the bar in between stitches while changing colors. So that's, that's actually a really cool skill for me. I don't me. have like a, an opposition to in Tarsha, it's just not something that interests yep. me. And it's going to be geometric. Someone was saying, you know it's Stephen West, it's not going to be unicorns prancing. And I was like, that would make it so much cooler. That would be pretty awesome. Um... So it's definitely geometric, which Leslie says makes it with my color choices super 80s rific. Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to give it one more clue. I might rip it completely out and cast on with different colors that might get. I think it would be really pretty in like three shades of the same color. Yeah, it would be like, like tonal. Yeah, three blues or three purples or something along those lines. And of course, you can see everyone's online. There's over a thousand projects. Everyone's going to have the spoiler picture at first, though. And that is living in my brand new bag. Do they get like, in trouble bag. if they don't have a spoiler picture up there? Does I, I Stephen don't know. West personally come and scold them? <laughs> if Stephen West personally <laughs> came and scolded me, I might do <laughs> not put up a spoiler picture just for that reason. Uh, is Stephen West in the spoiler? He's in the spoiler picture, isn't he? He's like in yes. a bunch of shawls. Yes, he's naked with shawls. So now he can go to that one. thing and see himself a thousand times. Yeah. Um. Probably. I would, I would feel awkward. Anyway, 
I have it in a brand new bag. This bag is by Naturally Nitty on Etsy. It was $23. It is awesomely huge, which is awesome because the shawl takes up a lot of space. Is it awesome? It is. It's awesome. It's got cool green fabric on the inside, and it's not my new project bag, like so it makes me happy. Pretty. The apples and pears. I think it's cool fabric. And she's a pretty cool gal, that Naturally Nitty. She's one of the Harry Potter house cut people. And she's in our group, which makes her even awesome. cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I just smacked myself in the face with a needle. <laughs> yes, I escaped this week. And then last but not least, this is stuff that I've just actively worked on this week. Um, and I was actually trying to pick up <laughs> for the afterthought for the afterthought heel while oh, at a, up black stitches is a disaster. While at a meeting, and um, okay, so I'm calling these my star stealer socks because they remind me of. Rainbow Bright, yeah, the cover of like that. the Star Stealer movie. If you're not an 80s child, I'm sad for you because you could have, if you haven't seen the Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer movie, appreciate an hour and a half of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and the sad thing is, I've watched it like multiple times. I wasn't made, gonna say that. But... I've made Kobe watch it with me too. So um, I was knitting on these at um, a work function on Monday after I woke up to two flat tires. So the only, I forgot to grab spare yarn for my waist yarn, but I had some Noro in my bag. Oh, that's going to be hell getting it so out of there. So it's Noro as the waist yarn, but I had gotten from like here, I think is where I was last week, all the way to like here in that meeting, so that would have just been wasted time if I didn't put yeah. on anything. And then I got the ribbing done um, at home. So this was all done basically Monday. Because I had lots of downtime on Monday. Because I had two flat tires that then had to be fixed. And then I got home, and my power was out because the heat was so hot, it caused the power to go out. And that I was what caused it to go out? Yeah, in my neighborhood, supposedly. Because there wasn't anything else going on. It's not like someone hit something. Yeah. It was just hot. So, um, I had to sit in my driveway because I had taken my, like, backup spare set of car keys to the... Uh, shop because you always take your backup set. You never take your keys with your house key and stuff. Right. On. And so I didn't have my house key, so I had to wait until the power came back on to get in my house. So I had lots of knitting time. So that guy. It actually it's not. It wasn't that bad. I had Dr Pepper. And I had air knitting conditioning and air conditioning car. and an iPhone. So <laughs> could have been much much worse. And that's it. That's all I worked on this week. Right? Yeah. You ask me like I know. No, that's not it. Oh, I'm no, staring at my other thing. So I started on Wednesday my Camp Loopy 2 project, which is cables. So I had purchased some Volmiza in the 100% Campari orange colorway. And Sherry, um, one of the elves, I had bought it like the day before. And one of the elves got me the okay to use it. I, I won't get the, obviously I didn't get the discount on it. It won't count for double points. But I get to use it. So it's got cables right there. And right there. And the pattern's spelled L-I-L space B-I-T. It's one of my patterns. And I got the first one done. And it's a head start on Christmas knitting. So that's good too. So the first one is done and we weighed. And I'll have enough for a second pair of socks probably for me when that's done. So I'll work on the second one this week because it has to be done by the 15th. So that's my Camp Loopy 2 project right there. And I'm looking at it on the screen and it's not nearly as pretty yeah, on the screen as it is in person. It's yeah, gorgeous it's in person. I think reds and oranges don't show up quite as well. Yeah, and the lights that we use are great for our skin, but they're not so great for picking up really rich jewel toned colors. So I'll take it. I'd much rather look like a live person and not a zombie with the bright lights. <laughs> um, I just messed this up. That was so infuriating. Ugh. Alright, let me get back to the point where I can fix it. So I have lots of other things on the needles. Well, I'll talk about me while you're fixing. But none of them got worked on. Except um, I did start working back on my sweater that I had on the needles that's out of the ecological wool because I want to get that done because I'm going to start a new sweater for my Camp Loopy 3 project. Sorry, I purchased the yarn for that. It's Cascade 220 in a lovely gray. So I'll be doing a sweater 
I can't remember the name of the sweater I picked out, though. Monday morning or something? Something like that. Monday cardigan? It's a cardigan by uh, Laura Ch Chow, I think? I think so. It's under my favorites. Um, it's got vertical lines. It does. It has like a vertical ribbing that runs down. And it's a cardigan. So I think really the only sweaters I knit anymore are cardigans. I just, I like to layer, obviously, over fun t-shirts. I'm also wearing a new t-shirt that I got from Woot.com. That and T-Fury are my new favorite places to get t-shirts. Because they have a new one every day. Yeah, I just fudged that, but we're going to pretend like I made it work. Um, okay, so your work's in progress. I only have one, and it is, I thought I brought the paper up here with me, but I can't find it now. It is the um, Mermaid Lagoon Socks by Sadie, Miss Yarnivore. And it was in Nitty a while ago. Uh, whatever, I lost the paper, I'm sorry. But, and it's in Madeline Taj Pashmina in the turquoise, or teal. I'm teal, gonna I think. Say, I think it's turquoise. Is it? Anyway, yeah. turquoise or teal, I can't remember which colorway. And I'm on the last repeat for the cuff. I don't know how many it calls for because I just do what I want anyway. Because it's only a 12 row repeat. So I'm almost, I'm at like row 7. And then I'll finish this and start the hip flap. Cool. I'm hoping to get to the end of this by the time the podcast is over. But probably not because I keep messing it up. So you have an FO and I do not. I do. My FO is enough. F. F. More F. Then I know this week. But it's finished. It is, so it's done and over. Laura gave me the um a very direct please finish something this week. I have no I have no FO, so you better get something done. <laughs> yeah. F Bob that happened. <laughs> so I started the ribbing on the lead light oh uh, Wednesday, I think. I picked up stitches and did a couple rows and then I finished it this last morning, night, this morning, last night around 1130 and then spent the next hour and a half weaving in ends because it had a lot of ends to weave in. And um, we should still have fit. Do you want me to hold no, it up? No, I just was talking about it first. Okay. So here it is. This is on my dress form. It's very pretty. Um, looks lovely. I think it's gorgeous. It still doesn't fit. And on top of the fact that it still doesn't fit, this is Knit Picks palette in a bunch of colorways. Ash is the gray, and I don't remember what the other colors are. So I finished it last night, and Michael had to work late, so he comes home, and as soon as he walks in the door, I'm weaving in the last end. So I set it in the, I go in the, my bathroom, and I put some soak in the sink, and I fill it up with water, and get it all nice and bubbly and pretty. And I put this in the sink, and it's like, have you ever seen a squid shoot ink? Oh, and it just, no. the entire thing within seconds was a blue black, I mean, it looked like, like ink had been poured into the sink. And it's a commercially made yarn that surely they have a way to set this color. And the blue just bled everywhere. It, it hasn't stained the yarn for as much as I can tell. Um, but yeah, it bled freaking everywhere. It took three sinks worth of water to get it to where it was still it was still blue, but it wasn't like I could see through it at that point. I've decided now the first time I wash wash stuff or soak stuff, I'm gonna put in one of those shout color catchers because I just had some socks where the color actually transferred onto a lighter color, so mm -hmm. there was like bleeding where it kind of smeared down and it was a blue to a white and it's just it's horrible. I mean to a degree I expect it from indie dyers because it's not sort of a mass produced thing but from a Knit Picks yarn I'm kind of disappointed I'm not gonna lie it's it's frustrating for it to bleed everywhere um and on that happy note I'm giving it to somebody because I, <laughs> I want it out of my house I want it gone I want the the bad karma kind of for me it's just not working so I measured it and it's 40 inches across the widest part of the bust, it's 32 inches across the, the most narrow part of the waist, and it's 40 inches across the widest part of the hip. And it, it doesn't come really far down on the hip, but at the widest part where it is, it's 40 inches. Um, I might actually measure real quick across the shoulders, um, because that's where it was really, really tight for me, was across the shoulders. 
and I'm going to say from the middle of one sleeve to the middle of the other is about 19 inches, give or take just a little bit. Um, so if those measurements fit you, 40 bust, 32 waist, 40 hips, and about 19 inches from the middle of one shoulder to the middle of the other, then um, send me an email at you don't call me less at gmail.com. And anybody within the next week who sends me an email and says, hey, those match my measurements, I'll put your name in a hat and I'll draw it on next week's show. So I need that information by the 13th of August, 2011. I just want to say, because I have a pet peeve, this is just my own pet peeve, if you're going to, um, if you are going to enter to get this sweater, I, I, please let it be for you and please let it be something that you're going to enjoy yeah. and wear. I hate it when people enter to win stuff and then they give it away or sell it, yeah. or to, especially if they sell it. Like, that's a big pet peeve of mine. So please... You for, know, the, for the good karma, for you. I am giving it away. I'm not asking for anything in return. It's freely for someone who will wear it and appreciate it. I'd rather it go to a knitter or a crochet or whatever, just a fiber artist who can appreciate the work that went into it. Um, but that's all I ask is that it's something that you will wear and that will bring you happiness and that it matches your measurements. <laughs> Um, I did not put, um, it does require a clasp here that's optional. You can put a little clasp here to hold it together. I didn't put that in. And also the edges where it was steeped, you can see it right there, have not been covered in grow grain ribbon or anything, so they're a little bit raw. It's, you'll never see it when you wear it, but I'm not, I'm done with it. The fact that it's blocking means I'm never going to have to touch it again except to put it in a package to whoever wants it. Okay, and that's enough. <laughs> um, so I, FOs are done. Yep. Spinning. I'll show you what I've got. I did start spinning. I, I have very little progress to show you, but I did start at least. And this is some tinted that I got at the third fling that I've been, I've been wanting to spin for a while and I just haven't had a chance. And this is a 50% soy silk, 50% wool blend, and it's called Meditation. And it's this kind of tealy blue, really light. Blue. It's pretty. So I started spinning it. I like the depth of the color to that. Mm -hmm. And I started spinning it on my matchless, and it's on the Wooly Wander Bobbin. And it's not super, super duper thin, but it's pretty thin. I would say it's probably a lace weight single, but it won't be a it won't be lace weight once it's applied. Um, but I'm also using the really large bobbin, so I'm, I'm not trying to make it crazy large thin. Wall. Yeah whirl. There you go. I can't think. So yeah, um, and I always leave a really fuzzy end if I'm not, you know, when I, if I'm going to come back to that bobbin at any point in time, because otherwise it'll end up lost and then I'll be end up cutting it off because I don't have the patience to search for it. And that'll be sad. But that's it. That's all. I've got maybe a tenth of an ounce on here. I mean, it's not much. I only spun for 45 minutes or so. But you have lots more stuff, right? Well, I have the second bobbin of the Sanguine Griffin in Wine Dark Sea Done. So now I have, it's this one. So now I have two. And plying will commence tonight as I watch um, a movie. So I'm going to apply it tonight and then I'll have it to show to y'all next week. And then I can finally get it to email, which she will like <laughs> and appreciate immensely. I already started stripping. Well, I still have the, um, the Numa Numa, the second half of that to spin. I just, I can't spin this thin. I'll show you how thin it is. Let me find an end. Uh-oh, spin you. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so it looks like that. Not that you all can see that. Ooh, it's energized. Energized singles are fun. <laughs> but, uh, how about that? I gotta put it over my finger. There we go. So it's about that thin, and I don't like spinning so I have no patience for super thin spinning it takes too long it does so uh, I am happy to be done with it and have it going someplace else and um, hopefully I'll get decent yardage of it I always worry when I spin for other people that a they're not gonna like it or B it's not gonna be what they expected or C it's, I'll spin this whole thing and, you know, it'll be, I think it's awesome and it'll be like 50 yards. 
out of four ounces, and that would be horrifically awful. So I always worry when I spin for other people, because when I spin for me, it's just like, whatever the roving tells me it wants yeah. to do, I kind of do. But when other people have certain, and Emo didn't have anything, she was just like, spin it, whatever. But still, I, I want it to be pretty for yeah. her, because she's my friend. You want to do your best for the people that you adore. Yes. That's a good way of putting it. So, that'll get plaid, and then she'll have to wait till I show it to y'all next week, and then I'll send it out. <laughs> and, uh, That's it. you have a couple things to review. I do. I have a very cool iPhone app that I'll show y'all first before we get to a magazine review. Let me bring it up on my phone. I did have it right there. There it is. So, there is a new program called Kismet Stitches. It is, let's see if, oh, I'll back up a little bit. Okay. Um, it is available in the App Store for the iPhone only. I guess you can use your iPad too. Yeah, it's Apple products only. It's an Apple products only thing. And what it is, it retails for two dollars, one ninety nine. Is it's a stitch dictionary essentially. So you can click on a category. I just clicked on lace, and there's all those different kinds of lace. And then let me click on horseshoe lace. Brings up a picture. A horseshoe lace and then if I click on charts it also brings up a chart with a legend and key for that stitch pattern so it's a good way of mobily and it has all the details like what yarn was used who knit it who knit it because the cool thing about this app and there's more images as well and you can also favorite stuff the cool thing about this app is she invites you to get involved. So Susan wants you to have her stick, help her have the stitch dictionary grow and you can find more information about that at, by emailing her at susan at kismet k-i-z-m-e-t knits dot com and you can find more details on this at her website which is www dot k-i-z-m-e-t k-n-i-t-s dot com. So I think I'm gonna find this super helpful when I come over to Leslie's and I'm like, hey, I've got this yarn and I want to do a dishcloth out of it. Let's find a stitch. So stuff like that. And having the ability to favorite things is very, very cool. And the fact that other people can help contribute and it's going to be a constantly growing and evolving thing. It kind of reminds me of the Barbara Walker yeah, project so just where they went and if you've never been to that website, it was a blog. And they went and knit all the Barbara Walker the stitch charts, yeah. tr patterns. And they don't actually have them there, but they re-knit them so that you could see them in color and in different yarns. So it kind of reminds me of that, and I thought it was very, very cool. So that's the first thing. I'm actually going to slide my power of my phone off because I went to download updates, and it's acting all crazy-like. The other thing is Knit Scene came out with a new issue. And they actually came out with this, I got this when I was on vacation at Manning's. So quite a while ago, like mid-July. And typically if we miss a magazine issue, like if we're reviewing other stuff, I kind of just let it slide. I like this so much, I'm not going to let it slide because this is a very cool magazine. The first thing that I really, really like is they have a whole thing about making mods to sweater knitting to make it fit your body type better. And in fact, there's three different patterns by Amy Herzog about um, four people who are bigger on top, people who are bigger on the bottom, different shapes and how to adjust your knitting. I feel like this would have been useful a couple of months ago. I know, isn't that funny? For your shapes, not funny. Ironic in a horribly awful way. Um, the first sweater that I really, really like in here is that of Cascade 220 in two different colors. It is that one right there. Did you like that one? The color work? Mm, not really. Not really? It wasn't my style. It's worked flat in rows, which I can get behind. 
I, really, I just like cardigans. I have to say that whoever is the person that lays out the magazine and decides what images go where and what graphic goes where did an excellent job in this. It's very fresh looking without being too young, without being too teeny bopper. It's very, mm -hmm. it's a nice layout. So whoever did that, should you watch the show? Good job. And that was the Claremont's cardigan. I really like the East Hale cardigan but not with the color details. That's this one right here. And it's got a very cool lace detail. Let me see if I can find an up close lace detail. It's down there. In the back, so the back has a lace panel, but that with the stripes, A, those stripes are not gonna look good on me at all. So I'd like to see if someone would do it all in one color. That would be super duper cool. You could do it all in one color. I could. And that takes Cascade Yarns Ecological Wool. No, that's the man sweater. I totally said the wrong name. It's the Morrison Cardigan. And that's Plymouth Yarns Baby Alpaca DK. So the Morrison is the striped cardigan. The Morrison's the stripe. The East Hale that I just said is actually that man's cardigan right there. Which is a nice, simple mm -hmm. guy's cardigan. I kind of wish they had done a different zipper. I think the zipper is kind of that big, like, metal yeah. zipper. Mm. Industrial looking. Not my favorite. What else? I kind of really like this cowl, I'm not going to lie. I've seen a lot that are similar to that, sort of asymmetrical button detail. Yeah, and this one's actually done on a bias, so that made it a little bit more interesting to me. Because I haven't knit on a bias in a while. I don't think I've knit on a bias since the clapity. Is that how you say it? Clapoti? Clapity? I don't know, something, whatever. Something. The Kate Gilbert pattern. I like this pullover a whole lot, although I'm not a huge fan of pullovers. But that's the Lowry pullover. There's all over cables, I think it's very pretty. I don't really see you as an all over cable kind of person. I'm not. I appreciate them, but it's not something I would knit for me. Because that's a lot of work. And we all know I'm lazy when it comes to my knitting. I wouldn't say that. I'm, I, I would say you're selective about what you're willing to work for. That's true. Um. And there's very little that I'm willing to work Look, for. I'm trying to put you in a positive <laughs> light here. There's also a very interesting article about seamless top-down and bottom-up sweaters with a yoke. So there's that. I, I like the interest. I like the detail of yokes, and I love seamless sweaters. All right, this is what sold me on this magazine. This because is just more proof that the, the layout and the conceptualizing is much better in this magazine. I love it. And this will be made. I think I'm going to use some, this is done out of Madeline Tosh sock. It's the Live Oak Charlotte by Rami Hill. Y'all know I love Rami Hill to begin Rami with. Hill, I think. But I almost bought yarn for this to make it while I was in Philadelphia. And then I was like, no, I have enough sock weight at home. So it's one skein of sock weight. And it's to, I think this is going to be the next shawl that I work on. Um, I hate this. I do too. I think it looks... And actually the new Interweave Knits has something very similar to it with a bulky, bulky weight shawl that I just... I guess I hate the way yeah. that it, it's styled to be a fashion piece. And while it would work fine for you keep over your shoulders at home when you are got a little chill, it's not a fashion piece. It's too... It's too heavy. Uh, yeah. It's, it's too, too dense. thick for the pattern, I think. And it's weird for me because I have shawls that I've designed that have bulky weight but that just to me just I don't know there's something and you can see the big version I don't know if I showed that or not that's the Grand Police Palace shawl by Tannis Gray I just it's not a I mean I would knit it to wear it at home I'd knit it to wear it you know somewhere where I'm just I'm more concerned Instead with of like a robe than, yeah. yeah than fashion but there's a lot of stuff in here I love. And there's a lot of different weights. It does, in this one, go from lace weight and lace weight sweaters. The cover sweater is actually at a lace weight. The interesting detail in the cover sweater was the um, the actual like pattern stitches. You hold the yarn doubled. And then for the body of the sweater, it's single weight lace weight. Hmm. So that I thought was interesting. But there's a lot of interesting detail work to the pieces in here. It's not just like all cables or all lace or all one weight. It's definitely, I think knit seems much more approachable for me 
than Interweave Knits. I don't know why. Or even Vogue. Vogue is sometimes so out there that... Yeah, I mean, I can always appreciate the... No, I can't. It, it, it's always interesting to look at. For I'm talking about Vogue at this point, but it's rarely something I see and decide I would like to knit. Whereas knit scene, there's always like four mm -hmm. or five things in that magazine that I'm like, ooh, I really like this. Yeah. There's some good stuff. So, it was my birthday on Friday, and I it wanted was. to take a minute and say thank you to everyone. I woke up, I think I took over Plurk. For Friday, I mean, I like every. There were so many happy birthdays on my timeline, and I, I really appreciate it. It's very considerate, and you know, people said it on Ravelry. I got emails, I got PMs, um, I got text messages. <laughs> so I feel very loved and very appreciated. And I got some good stuff. Um, Steven sent me the uh, red mittens you've seen on his show, not mittens, fingerless gloves. Uh, so I've got those. I don't bring those up with me. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. And Laura, <laughs> the thing that she's shown you before, I also got, I, I, when I saw it and it was red, I was like, hmm. <laughs> so the Moody Kerchief, and this is out of what yarn? Madeline Tosh, and the Turn and the tart colorway. Okay. Now, I can't put it on because it's hot, and I, I didn't turn the fan on because I listened to that episode with the fan on, and it's just distracting, so I didn't turn the fan on. It's too hot to put it on, but it's very pretty. It smells of soap. It does smell of soap, and it's lovely. And I got a set of signatures <laughs> in a size I didn't own. And speaking of signatures, I have a very who sent me a gift certificate. So I don't want to call her name, but I wanted to say thank you. You know who you are. She sent me a gift certificate. And she sent me a gift certificate for $50, and I'm like, hmm, the needles are 40 Maybe I should just buy set to justify, you know, I don't want to waste that other $10. When it's I got silly. that set for you, I got a set for me too. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was like, I don't have nines yet because they had just come yeah. out with the nines. Now so, I have nines. I'm going to order the eights and the nines and then I just won't have the threes, but I don't use threes a lot, so I don't think that I'll miss them. So I love these things. And I'm sorry if that comes across as spoiled. They are a luxury item, but they are a luxury item you will never go back from. It is... You will never go back from signatures if you purchase them. That's very true. If you've been on the fence, get off the fence and go to the <laughs> internet and order yourself some. And then Laura got me a little silly thing. <laughs> I have to show y'all. It is. This is the coolest thing ever. And she just, somebody put her on our group, or did she advertise in her? No, Becky, Becky bought okay. some. And so I used, she had the chocolate donut ones at her house. Oh, that's right. So I was washing my hands with chocolate donut soup, and I was like, this is adorable. I need to get Leslie cupcake ones for her birthday. So I got cupcake soaps. They look good enough to eat. <laughs> but if you lick them, you're going to come in for a surprise. <laughs> they do smell good, though. You smell how close. They smell very fruity. Yeah, they're raspberry something. Raspberry cream mm, cupcakes. That's soap. what they smell like. And they are from KC Soap and More on Etsy.com. And the person was wonderful. Got them to me right away. The packaging was super cute. I had a little fortune cookie soap. She sent me a little goodie. Oh. So I have a fortune cookie soap at my house. They're very cute. And um, I get to put pretty little soaps in my guest bathroom. So that's sweet. <laughs> I think you should make Michael use them. <laughs> I'm just going to keep them out so for that one. Um, I had something else I wanted to say. Oh, I got, well, let's show this first. Becca, who you'll remember was on episode 60-something. She sent us a big, huge box of goodies. She did. So we wanted to show y'all some of that stuff. Becca is super sweet, and she's got enough going on in her life with the fact that she's growing a person. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of growing a person, I have a baby overload this week. We got to hang out with Molly. Molly's adorable. I got to see Molly on lunch for lunch on Thursday, and then I saw her Saturday. We spent a bunch of time with her and Alicia, and because Alicia comes with her, you know, <laughs> she's too young to drive herself. And then today I got to see my <laughs> sister and her her little guy Anton, who I hadn't seen yet since he was born, and he's almost three months old. So I got to see him today, and he's just the baddest gorgeous baby i swear he's just so bad he's got little neck rolls and michael <laughs> says does it make you want a baby and i'm like but anyway becca the person who's growing a person the person who's growing also known as wolf yeah. and as a, her own separate entity 
<laughs> uh, she sent us some stuff. She made fiber. She did. She hand carded some fiber. I'm sorry. That's noisy. I'm sorry. So there's and it's gorgeous. a blue one with all kinds of stuff in it. Nylon, sparkle, wool, something. Assorted wool, silk, silk noils. Wool nuffs, I think is what it says. And that one's going to be Laura's. Yes. And then this one is mine, and it's wool, silk, oil, and Firestar. I'm going to take it out so people And it's reds and oranges. So this is what my little... This reminds me so much of... There was a person who did um, roving balls called the Yarn Zombie, and she no longer is in business. But, oh my God. I love these. I cannot wait to spend Yeah, you never knew what would end up on your yarn ball from Yarn Zombie, right? It was always crazy stuff. It was lovely, crazy things that I loved. And then she sent us some more stuff from CJ Kopeck. Um, and I've got a few of CJ Kopeck. I've spun CJ Kopeck before, and I've enjoyed it very much. So they're two um, different braids. This one is Enchanted. Enchanted. And this one is... Doesn't say. Maybe it's Alpaca on. Marinos. It doesn't have a name. Yeah. It says number twelve. So. Gorgeousness. There must be lots more spinning done in my house now. Yeah. My fiber stash is getting a little out of hand. I have two the oh, works in progress so bins. I have two of those, and now they've become fiber bins exclusively. I know. And then she sent Some this lotions. awesome hand lotion. Lositane. France that I cannot wait to try. Yeah, and mine smells like cherries. Mine smells like nothing, which is perfect. But speaking of fiber stash just getting out of control, I got my July shipment from Cloud Lover. There's all kinds of crinkling today. I'm so sorry. And this I is, love this. Um, Cloud Lover is a superwash BFL, nothing super fancy, and it's called Jazz Hands. Love it. It's very happy and crazy. It's wonderful. So, um, again, love, love Cloud Lover. Can't speak highly enough of Cloud Lover. Um, and that was all Becca's fault. Yep. Uh, I think that's it. We're only at 37 minutes. That's awesome. It's crazy, but it's good because I've got things to do. <laughs> I'm sure y'all got things to do too. Yeah. We won't take up your whole day. So, stay cool. Have some sweet tea. Some real sweet tea. Two cups of sugar to the gallon. That's the way it works. And oh, sweet tea. And I just ate some Twizzlers. They were delicious. Yeah, she came in my house. With a mouthful of Twizzlers. <laughs> How else do you go in your friend's house? So, we have lots of exciting things coming up, which we'll share when we can. And um, for people who bought the bags, I'm not done with them yet. <laughs> I'm down to about 15 left, and I hope to finish them this week and get them signed this week. So and that, then we'll send them to so y'all. we can say next week that they're done. And sent. That'll be wonderful. Yep. So um, that's the goal now that I've finished the sweater and have an official FO. Again, if you if the measurements match yours, email me at you don't call me less at gmail.com. Tell me who you are um, and tell me that they match your measurements and we'll um, put we'll your, name, put in your name in a hat. Maybe I'll get to buy that top hat that I've always wanted. <laughs> High dreams you've got there. <laughs> if I get a top hat, I have to get a cane to go with it. All right, now I'm just babbling. That can be your. Halloween costume. We have to start thinking about Halloween costumes. I hate to make that grumpy face at you, but we do need to. Anyway. <laughs> the hassles with being a video podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> the dreams that have to be destroyed. Yes. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. So we'll see you guys again next week. Until then, have a lovely one. You can and find us at www.thenitgirls.com. Three L's. I promise there'll be show notes this week. She promise. said it. Promise, Twitter, promise, promise. Twitter, Plurk, Facebook group, Ravelry, Google Plus, Leslie Thompson, Laura Linneman. Yep. Uh, I think that's enough social networking. <laughs> or networking <laughs> in general for anyone. Yes. So, all right, that's it. Y'all have a good week. <laughs> Bye, Bye y'all.